Welcome to the stream, folks. Do this IRL. What the f*** is that? All right, there, there. Uh, how long am I doing this for? Is, is he doing this? I can't tell. Also, this is the stupidest sh Why are you making me do this? Moki, tell me when to s tell me when I could stop. My legs are dying. I did leg day yesterday. I'm f dying. Mech would never stop. Okay, this is true. Okay, hold up. By the way, I lost like 30 viewers as soon as I did that. Just want y'all to know. What was the most successful tag rebranding? Dr. PP into PPMD? That one clicked. Hungrybox released a list, a ranking, to talk about the most recent rankings in 2022. And it includes Genesis 8, Pound, Summit, and Function, which are the biggest four events of the year. Uh, basically, Genesis was supposed to be April, but uh, it got postponed. So it looks kind of funny thinking, wait, this is the year, but literally Genesis just happened. How did we not have other results? Well, the answer is we had Omicron happening at the early part of the year, which uh, kind of up plans, f***ed up Genesis's, Genesis's, Genesis's plans as well. So that's why we're kind of like second quarter heavy in the first half of this year. If you look at these results, you have Hungrybox's rankings, which by the way, these results do not include uh, certain key wins. It doesn't really talk about who they've beaten, who they've lost to. Just not a whole lot of data, and I'm honestly of the opinion that placements should matter. A lot of people uh, in the past, and probably still now, don't feel like placements should matter. They're like, it's about who you beat. And to that I say, well, what the f***? What if they beat the people that beat the people, but the people that beat the people weren't highly ranked? Does that make sense to anybody? You see what I'm saying here? So what, they should be docked for handling the bracket they were given, that they have no choice over, simply because other people got upset? That's kind of whack. So I always think, look, it... Of the utmost importance is who they beat, but you should also care about placements, okay? Like, let's say Laud, right? So Laud had a bracket where he, uh, like, Leffen didn't show up, so he didn't have to deal with Leffen. And he got a, he got an easier bracket to, to top eight. Okay, that is, that's one scenario where the placement doesn't tell the whole story. But let's say, uh, let's say instead, Leffen was upset by, like, let's say, Magi. And then Laud beats Magi. Are we gonna dock laud for placing highly just for handling his bracket or are we gonna say well magi did very well that tournament and then laud beat magi so therefore laud should get maybe not exactly mango credit but he should get some good credit for it if, if let's say laud beat jmuk to make it into top eight winner side and then laud makes top eight winner side and then people go well he didn't beat leffen because leffen didn't show up and then he beat jmuk who upset Plup, so he didn't have to play Plup, so because Law didn't beat Plup, it's not that great of a performance. That's bullshit. Because we know how good J-Mook is now. We know how good he was playing that day. So how are you going to dock someone for beating the person that was beating the people? But, I mean, it's still, it still should be more valuable. Like, some people blatantly just ignore, like, placements. And I, I, I don't think that's right. I guess I'm just saying I'm forever salty about my summit run, where people were like, but who do you really beat? Who do you really beat? He didn't have to play Chewed At. Well, I'm sorry, Moki beat him. What do you want me to do? He didn't have to play Wizzy. Well, I'm sorry, Amsa beat him. What do you want me to do? Yeah, I should just lose and then play who I'm, who's in my bracket. That'd be better. But yeah, they're like, he, he beat Duck, Moki. Although Moki, Moki wasn't like super fire at that point. He was like coming up, but we know how good he is. He beat, he beat Chewed At at that tournament. So I had to play Moki and I beat Moki. I think it cut off because everyone else might have only attended one event or something. So I think right now, I agree with Zane. I think Zane is for sure still number one in the world. He got fifth, but literally right before this, and by the way, it was really funny. Last stream, Amalira, one of one of our favorites here in the sub pub, said, is it just me or has Zane been kind of falling off lately? And I was like, bro, are you, are you kidding? We were literally four days ago, we were talking about how Zane is about to win three back-to-back -back stack tournaments, which no one has really done in a very, very long time. One of them including Genesis. If he wins Summit, he's he's moving up on the all-time rankings. And then sure enough, he loses, and then it's like, yo, Zane falling off? Like clockwork, baby, it happens all the time. Can't escape it. Zane still number one in the world, okay? That doesn't change. Yeah, because his pound run and Genesis run, which by the way, were extremely dominant. 
Aside from IBDW at Genesis, I don't think that Zayn has really struggled in a matchup until Summit, right? Like, so I think he killed it at Pound and he mostly killed it at Genesis. It was clean. And you got IBDW, which is weird because he placed third at uh, Genesis, which is was great, but he lost to JMook. So then you're like, huh, not a good loss for him. Look, clearly JMook was on some <laughs> But IBW was arguably number two or number three. So he lost to someone brand new. That hurts him. It's got it. It has to. And then Pound comes and he gets ninth. He doesn't even make top eight. For a top three player to not make top eight, that's rough. That's a, that's a rough look, okay? And then he did it again at Function. Where, by the way, people were cheering for Canada. But there were a lot of Canadians there, so they, and they're very loud. And they were cheering for their boy Moki. So that makes sense. But also some people weren't cheering for him. But also, that also is a, a matter of showing up to your locals and like, look, it happens all the time, by the way. Like, look, SoCal loves me. SoCal got, got love for your boy. I, I would hope, but I haven't been around. I don't think they're gonna be cheering for me if I show up to an event, they're gonna be cheering for the down to the ground folks, right? And even when I was active, if I played someone like ARMY back in the day, they would cheer, cheer for ARMY because Army at that point is the up and comer. He's showing up to the Smash Fest. He's hitting the dab pen, right? He's ripping from the bongs with with the homies, and I'm not. I'm I'm traveling to tournaments and shit. so naturally, like they came up with Army. Army is one of the the newer gen, and he was killing it in tournaments. They're gonna cheer for Army against me. But if I'm playing someone out of region, typically SoCal would cheer for me because we're still I'm still homies with a lot of people in SoCal. So if people aren't cheering for you in your own region, I don't know if that's a region problem more so than it is like, yo, how much are you like, are you, are you down for, New like, what are you doing for New York, right? Also, I think it's very clear what some people rep regions and some people don't. It's a weird thing. Like I am very proud of being from SoCal. I talk about it all the time. My love for In-N-Out, my love for LA, it has very little to do with Smash, but I, I love being SoCal, like that's who I am. And Mango in a way too, he doesn't talk about let's go SoCal, right? But who's he a fan of? The Lakers, right? Who's he a fan of? The Angels, right? He's like all about like local <laughs> Eagles is the exception, right? But Mango still reps SoCal, people. Uh, IBW has done a lot for New York, definitely Tri-State, but I don't know, maybe they feel like he hasn't been around lately. And by the way, even when I was inactive, I was drinking hella beers with SoCal. So I was still, uh, like I was showing up to events, wasn't entering, but I was drinking beers with the boys. That goes a long way. People in your region don't randomly decide to cheer against you. It's like, you gotta foster that love from your region. Anyways, IBW got ninth at Function 2, so it was looking shaky, and IBW was even saying that he wasn't top five. Something along those lines, right? Which is crazy. Like, it was two events, and I still don't think that drops him from the top five, uh, but they were very sus losses. He didn't lose to anyone bad, right? But Amsa and Kadorn, like, look. Is that a bad performance? We're talking two top 10 players. Talking a possible top five player. But still, for his standards, it was rough. So it was like, if he didn't have a big one at Summit, he might be like number four or five. But then he went ahead and just won the whole fucking thing. He won Summit, so he gets a marquee win for the year so far. I agree that that keeps him at number two. Now, Hungrybox at third is interesting. So people were asking me beforehand, uh, who do you think is going to win Summit? I said, well, very clearly Zane. I don't think that anyone's touching Zane. I don't think he's got a whole lot of challenges right now. But I said that the only person who's going to meet him in Grand Finals who's got the best shot right now is Hungrybox. Here's how I put it. It's like Cody's peaks can challenge Zane, but lately he's been uh, on the downswing. Mango's peaks can challenge Zane, but lately he's also been on the downswing. Leffen's peaks have not been challenging Zane lately, but he's also been kind of consistent. The, the downswings haven't been that low, so he's somewhere in the middle. Now, Hungrybox's peaks have been higher than Leffen's lately, and he also has been consistent and not been very low at all. My call was Hungrybox uh, to, to challenge Zane in Grand Finals and possibly having the best shot of winning the event. That didn't happen, but once again proved that he's very consistent by getting third, second at pound, fifth at Genesis, it all checks out, and along, along the way, getting some big wins. Beating Plup at Summit, he beat Amsa at, on one of those. Obviously, Hungry Box doing very well and very consistent. Uh, with some key wins, and the consistency is on the higher end. It's in the top three usually. I think this third place is justified. Now we get to J Mook. Now, J Mook, having only two events, 
But one of them was second place at Genesis, which is huge. I think fourth place is very much deserved. I can't think of anyone else to give it to unless... So I am, I am of the opinion that rankings should be a gradual change. Like they should, they should take into account what the prior rankings were and then people move gradually up or down from that point. So if you were ranked first and then you get like three, like 25th placings, do you drop Zane down to like top, like below top 50? No, you put Zane at like 10th. Right? That's kind of what would happen. Or ninth. Right? If, if Zane had three events where he placed 25th after this, he dropped down to like 10th or 11th. Do you think Axe not being in the conversation is fair? Considering the peaks of the other players, I think it's fair. Like, if like he's in the top 20 conversation, okay? Like, if you look at everyone else, they have more marquee wins. Whereas Axe is like, is not falling off but he's not getting the peak performances the higher performances this is not official guys this is just hungry boxes list i'm just discussing i'm just being a react andy to other people's content but yeah uh jmook deserves it i don't see another argument to be honest maybe an argument for plup and just like more so like keeping plup at fourth and then jmook at fifth but that's tough it's just a weird situation because the people that were this high up like for example, Mango has had some poor performances, so it has he has to drop. Like look, 9th, 13th, 9th, it's like I still don't think this drop is justified because like I said, it should be based on literally the last rankings and then a gradual drop. So if Mango was number 1 and then he got 9th, 9th, 13th, I could see a drop to like 7th justified. All right, let's continue. The Amsa placement is a little surprising. And now, like, granted, I would have to look at uh, exact results, which I would do if I became a panelist this year. I get asked pretty regularly, and I, I've said no the last, like, two times. Next time, I probably will. Uh, but at that point, then I would research deep into the wins and losses, right? Right now, I'm just thinking super high level. My idea is that even though these results, like, fifth and third, right, obviously very good, does that get you fifth right now over the likes of Plug? Or hell, maybe even a lot. I think it's arguable, uh, but part of the argument could be that Amso was already like up there, and like I said, with the gra with the my idea of gradual rankings, if Amso's already up here and then he does this well while other people do worse and move down from their original ranking, then it makes it's it's kind of like fifth place feels like it's a slot that needs to be filled, and Amso is the best candidate for it, rather than Amso definitely being fifth in the world right now. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like, like Zane is not just filling a slot. He is number one. Right? IBW is number two. Right? Whereas fifth, it's like, I can't really say who really, really deserves it. But I'm okay with Ansa. I'm okay with Plup. I'm okay with Lod, to be honest. And I think all three of them were hovering around this area as well. Except for, I think Lod has shot up the most. I would even argue, yeah, Lod could take it. Plup could take it. Amsa could take it. I think all three are fine here. To me, uh, Lod has been, uh, aside from Jmook, the most impressive as of late. Like, just watching him play. The dude is clearly starting to get into another level. And it makes me kind of sad that, oh, he's going to be a doctor. Oh, he's going to save people. Like, no! Quit that and play a children's party game for a living, Lod. Come on. I think Plup's second place and the people he beat there's also an argument that that propels him above life. It's so impressive. It's like, not only is he doing it with a lesser represented character, he's doing it, like, he's also grinding it, right? A lot of these matchups are not good for Peach, and he's finding ways to either hang or win. For example, Hungrybox. Against Hungrybox, right? And then on top of that, he's finding ways to beat uh, the likes of Leffen, who literally forced Armada to, well, at least Armada felt inclined to switch to Fox to deal with Leffen against Peach. Here's Lod beating Leffen with Peach. Nice shot Hugo is getting more... Yeah, it's so funny. Every time you listen to the Chillin' Driss track, everyone he makes fun of me losing to is an absolute legend of the game. Almost everybody. Yeah, not to mention Lod fucking beat Zane. Are you kidding me? Now, granted, it was in round robins, but it's still very legit. It was three out of five. It's Summit. Every set counts. Insane. 
Beat Leffen and Zane at that tournament. So Melee is in a very good place, dude. It's like the people that you thought were just unbeatable are just straight up losing right now. Even number one is 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 like at it's at stake. Like somebody could take this. But yeah, no, I'm I am probably most impressed with Lod. You know, aside from Jim, I'm most impressed by Lod as a. I think he's so good, and I. I know he's got to go back and uh, and be a doctor, but it makes me sad that he's going to eventually, like once he officially starts, he's going to be down on time. I don't think he's officially started yet. That, that's what Vish told me. I'm not sure. But he's going to be down on time, and I don't think we'll be seeing as much of Lud. Like, how could we? From what Vish told me, one of the, the most prestigious types of doctors you could be. What is he? Like a neurosurgeon? He's something. Something way the fuck up there. I don't know. Gynecologist or something. Just way up there. Orthopedic surgeon. What does orthopedic mean? Oh, like on some Doctor Strange shit? Could he fix Doctor Strange? Specializing in hands. I did not know that that was the- that's the most valued one? Is he gonna save us when our hands are dead? From grasping G GameCube controllers? Like, I said it during the Summit broadcast, but if you didn't know, if you're looking to improve in Melee, he literally wrote an entire guide on it. Listen to this man. If I come back, I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna do a live reading on stream. Just the whole fucking thing. Oh, he founded the Smash Club at your university? Damn. Chat, chat, listen to me. I'm not bragging, but I was telling Vish of my top like three wins or top five wins that I've ever had in my career, Lod is, is one of them. I'm not trying to brag that I beat Lod, okay? I am just, I, I was just shocked that I managed to beat him. That's all I'm saying, okay? Does that make sense? I'm not trying to brag. Do I think Hbox could win a major this year? Oh, definitely. I thought he would win this one, to be honest. As soon as Zayn was in losers, I thought he could definitely win. But he lost to IBDW. I thought IBDW could lose to JMook again, considering how he was playing. And then I thought Hungrybox would beat JMook in winner's finals. I'm still excited to see what JMook versus Hbox will look like, to be honest. That'll be crazy. Next on the list, we have Nun, which is actually a little surprising to me. If you look at Nun right before the end, like towards the end of last year, he was definitely slipping undoubtedly top five at a certain point. And then he started falling off where he was like arguably top 15 and maybe slightly outside of it. And then he just comes back and just hits it, gets into the top 10 again. I don't know where this guy comes from, but it's just some, some months he's just hot, some months he's not, but he he's never irrelevant. Like he's always relevant in the meta. It's so crazy. Considering how he plays, do that. I'm gonna try to do that. No, fuck it. I'm gonna try to do that. I could do it. If none could do it, I could do it. Here's where I think uh, Mango's got to be at 8th. Like, granted, 9th, 13th, 9th, not uber impressive, but like like I said, it's gradual rankings. You got to move from the top. If Mango was number one at the end of last year, which I think he was, it was kind of a cluster <laughs> after the last summit between IBDW, Zane, and, and Mango. But if Mango was number one, or even number two, <laughs> even though his performances haven't been great, I think it drops him to like 8th, at worst. I don't think Mango should be this low. I think Mango should be right here, and then none makes total sense, alongside Kadorn. Kadorn also has been sick. I remember there was a point where he was coming up and he was solidly top 10, but started falling off a little bit. I was back. Can't deny the results. 5th and 7th, pound to summit, fire. I hear a lot of people say Kadorn like, has like one of the ugliest styles, but it's effective. Like, I don't know anyone who loves what, like, not, not who loves watch. I know people who love watching Ghidorah. But like, his style is not sexy. It's so mental. You know what I mean? It's like very calculated and deliberate and very methodical. His style with Marth honestly reminds me a lot of like Duck style with Samus. Ghidorah here makes sense. Uh, Leffen being a 10, I could see it. Considering that Leffen hasn't had a whole lot of a chance to like, Defend his rank. He's been absent. And then when he's shown up, he's been in the fifth place range. Getting ninth at Summit, not great for him. But like he hasn't been around a lot and he hasn't been like super duper impressive. I think 10th place makes sense. Maybe even sense. But it, it, it really just feels temporary until he shows up to more things. It feels like a, uh, like a fake rank. Uh, Mango being at 11th, also, like I said, I think that's too low. I think he's got to move up. So that, that would put Leffen at like 11th in my mind. Mango would be like 8th. Ginger, I think without without the Function 2 win, I don't know if Ginger would be in the top 14. But he won that, very stacked field. 
Not to say that Ginger doesn't deserve a top 14. It, it didn't feel like he, he like solidly held any of those spots. Now, Moki feels a little too low. But if we're looking at the results, okay. Lower than Ginger. Or we're looking at placements. I, ha I need to look at the results. But I saw Moki respond to HBox. <laughs> You know how that goes. Moki gets a little, a little, a little mad sees at at our, at uh, at HBox. Oh, Leffen does have an HBox win. Okay. Yeah, like I said, if I ever do an official rankings of my own, then I I would look I would look deeply into all the results. Slug is interesting. So Slug getting fourth, third at the function. It's like we just gave them to the function boys as long as they did well at Genesis. These are the guys that only showed up to Genesis. It makes sense. They can't really show up to Summit unless they were you know they have a slot. I'd love to know how Magi compares to to slug here slug magi aklo i don't know about ak well i don't think aklo did well at genesis pipsqueak yeah what about pipsqueak and fiction actually yes fiction's been consistent pretty consistent only problem is he's missing some marquee high placements at big events pipsqueak has been super solid winning ltc what about sora how sora look? we don't even have wizzy here well because he doesn't show up to anything so yeah, this whole thing gets thrown for a loop once Wizzy shows up tomorrow. Johnny hasn't been doing super well lately. But yeah, overall, I don't think this list is very upsetting. Uh, I think the controversial ones are like Mango being that low and maybe Moki being a little too low. Otherwise, like Amsa, Plup, and Lod feel super interchangeable to me. And Zane's definitely first and I think Hungrybox, I think the top three is perfect. I think Jmook, like you can't deny it. Like with results like that, he has to be fourth. And then Amsa... Plup, Lod, interchangeable. None is perfect other than Mango possibly being in that spot instead. None in Kadoran. I think none in Kadoran would come down to exact results. Yeah, something weird happened with Wizzy that he couldn't attend Genesis, but he was definitely on the lineup. Anyways, chat. Yeah, that's how. That's what I think about Hungrybox's rankings. I think it's dope that people are getting back into these rankings conversations. I think it's good for the game. I think it's good for discourse. I think it's good for content. <laughs> That's what we need. That's what it's all about. Anyways, that's what all I really wanted to talk about today. I just, I bullshitted about random things, but I wanted to cover mostly this and the skits. I think that's going to wrap it up for me. As you can see, the sun is glaring. It's about to get even hotter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the subs, y'all. Thanks for the support. Check out my fan house if you like fashion and working out and stuff. All right, peace. See ya. Can't tell a person when it's right to pop off. What's funny is that Hungrybox walks back in with eyes of shame. He is like ashamed of the pop off. You can see it. Basically, the way I always saw it is if someone beats me once, I consider them a threat forever.